I'm here with the new owner of the fastest Anaconda submission in UFC history. Vincente, how do you feel about that? I feel great. Uh, maybe I also got the most Anacondas, I think. I might. And it's great. You know, uh, it was a big win. I, I've been working so hard for this. And, you know, we had the cancellations. I was like, man, I need to fight. I want to fight. Give me a fight. And, you know, fortunately, uh, Temba stepped up. And he was the guy, you know, he was the guy to get finished. And I got the job done. And I know we were talking about mindset uh, yesterday in the morning. And, you know, you went through a lot mentally as well because it's not easy to train for one opponent and then have a switch at a couple of weeks' notice and then fight someone totally different. Uh, I think you did a great job of staying focused and maybe Temba came in overconfident and he was trying to rip hard low kicks and then he, he jumped in at you. But you stayed laser focused and you were able to drop him with a right hand. Tell me, what do you, what do you attribute to, to that new mental focus that you have? I think that uh, through my whole life, through my whole career, I've had, you know, a lot of battles. So I'm a very experienced guy. But lately, like, after these struggles, I would say from Jeff Neal's fight onwards, that was the first time I was knocked out ever. Yeah. And that kind of changed something. So I had to rebuild not only uh, my skill set, but also my confidence. The skill set I did rebuild very well uh, with Kill Cliff with all the team. That was what happened in the RDA fight. I showed a whole new level, you know, at skill set. But my, you know, my, that that spirit in me, the the fire in me, that Vicente Lucas silent assassin that everybody always expected, that kind of was like still sleeping. And after the Buckley fight, that just woke me up. And I have great brothers in Gilbert Burns and Gregory Robocop, you know, and all the guys at Kill Cliff, but especially these two because we share not only uh, our fighting, you know, but we also share the same faith. We all believe in Jesus and we go to church, and this has strengthened me so much. And they, they were real with me, you know. They didn't let me just like, okay, you know, he, is, he had that loss. No, they came to me, hey, you, you got to – dig in you got to bring that back because that is the fighter that is going to go in there and is going to dominate and this is what i w what i brought over here so whoever stand in in front of me tonight that's what i was going to do you know three rounds five rounds it could be a quick finish or a war but i was going to give it my all and with all my heart yeah you know me also i, I got knocked out one time in madison square garden in the ufc my first like international fight and it was hard for me to come back and i had, did, had to do a lot of soul searching and a lot of reading and finding out what can work and something that helped me was developing a mantra throughout training camp for every fight depending on my opponent one of them was i love the fear the fear will set me free i love the pain the pain will set me free do you ever use something like that like sayings or something that you know helps you zone in so that you can have that one track mind for your opponent or do you just is it your belief in christ that really helps like not worry about the outcome it, uh, it first and foremost is my belief in christ but with that said you know the Bible has so many verses, and that is exactly like things that you that bring to mind. So I was in the locker room, and fear comes in sometimes. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I would say, "I'm not gonna. I'm not. I. I don't care about the fear because I'm strong and courageous, and the Lord made me strong and courageous." I have right here Philippians 4:13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. So all these like are things that whenever you know you feel those things coming the nerves because i mean if it would be a lie for me to say no i'm there and i feel nothing man that's not real i feel a lot of things and we go through that that's what makes us you know what makes the sport so beautiful because we have to overcome all this mm -hmm. to step in there and go to battle and and you know jesus is who strengthens me and and all his word yeah, that's beautiful to hear, and I'm happy that you take inspiration in that, and I'm sure it motivates a lot of people around the world because there are so many believers in faith, and having faith is actually something we need now more than ever, and we see a lot of people have lost their way, so it's great that you're pushing that. It's actually great to be a good mentor for kids in the future that, you know, to keep believing in their faith. Uh, also, would you want to give a shout-out to any of your teammates that stepped up, that imitated your opponent, or who helped you in a way, or maybe one of your coaches? Anything specific that happened in camp that somebody really stepped up for you this time around? Yeah, I, wa I want to thank all my team, you know, all Kill Cliff, Henry, uh, we've been working for over 10 years now. Uh, Gregory and Gilbert, they were here with me. Now, Jason Jackson, Delan Delano Taylor, uh, Austin, these three guys, they were like great training partners. You know, they, they served uh, me very well as, as training partners, really kind of emulating, you know, uh, Temba style. And before that, when I was facing Nick, uh, I have Yusaku and Sato, both used to fight in the UFC, uh, Japanese guys, and they, these guys have, you know, they're always there for me. So I will always be there for them as well. 
Well, thanks for coming on the show. Guys, Vicente Luque with the fastest Anaconda submission in UFC history. Guys, make sure you follow him on his social medias and congratulate him.